electric motor is transforming the electrical energy input into the kinetic energy because it's moving but we can also hear sound energy being produced and we've got moving parts so there must be some friction that will be changing some of the energy into heat energy. The kinetic energy output is the useful energy output, that's what we want to come out of the motor, but not all of the energy is coming out as kinetic energy, the sound energy and the heat energy are wasted energy output. Here is a Sankey diagram. It's designed to show what happens to the energy that is input and output by a device. So the arrows coming out, going down and to the right, show the different energy outputs and the width of the arrow represents the amount of energy. Here I've got some information about a motor and I'm going to use it to draw a Sankey diagram for the motor. So it tells me an electric motor is supplied with 100 joules of electrical energy, 80 joules is output as kinetic energy, 10 joules as heat energy and the rest as sound energy. The first thing I need to do is use the law of conservation of energy to calculate how much sound energy there must be. So I've got 100 joules of energy going in I must have a total of 100 joules of energy coming out so I've got 80 joules coming out there and 10 that's 90 so there must be 10 joules of sound energy so I'll just put that here I've got 10 joules of sound energy okay I've now got all the information I need to draw my Sankey diagram I need to choose a scale so that I can fit it on the grid here and the scale that I'm going to choose is one square equals ten joules okay so the flank Sankey diagram shows energy flowing in this direction so I'm going to start here with the base of the arrow that represents the hundred joules of energy going in. So using this scale that hundred joules must be ten squares wide. So one, two, three, okay so there's the electrical energy input so that is 100 joules of electrical energy that's going in. Now, I normally do the wasted energy outputs as arrows pointing downwards and the useful energy outputs as arrows pointing across to the right. So let's look at the wasted energy output. So I've got 10 joules of heat energy, so that's one square. So I can have an arrow here that's one square wide. And the thing to remember about Sankey diagrams is it doesn't matter how long the arrows are, the only thing that matters is how wide they are. So that's going to be my 10 joules of heat energy. And now I need another 10 joules of sound energy. So that's another one square wide. So that's 10 joules of sound there and then that should leave me with 80 joules which is 8 squares 
which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight there. Just need to turn that into an arrow. Okay, so that is 80 joules of kinetic energy. So as you can see, if I just draw some dotted lines, you wouldn't normally do this, but that bit there is what's happened to that energy that's turned into heat energy. That bit of energy there has turned into sound energy and all the rest of this energy has turned into kinetic energy. So we've obeyed the law of conservation of energy so the total amount of energy coming out is equal to the total amount of energy going in and my Sankey diagram clearly shows what happens to all this energy that goes in how much comes out as heat, how much comes out of sound and how much comes out as kinetic energy. We're going to have a look at the internal combustion engine which is the engine in a car and for a car we put energy in in the form of chemical energy in petrol and the useful energy we get out is kinetic energy but there's also energy wasted as sound and heat energy. So if we look at an example, if we have a thousand joules of chemical energy in the petrol and of that thousand joules, a hundred joules will come out as useful kinetic energy, 500 joules as heat energy and 400 joules as sound energy. Now to put that on a chart called a Sankey diagram, I need a scale. And the scale I'm going to use on my grid is that one square will represent a hundred joules. So if I start with the energy input, which is a thousand joules, that means that that has to be 10 squares wide. So you can see here that this part of the diagram where I've got the input chemical energy, that bit is 10 squares wide. Moving across to the kinetic energy, well I get 100 joules of kinetic energy out, and that's useful energy. So that's one square wide, and that's pointing in that direction, which indicates that that's a useful energy output. The sound energy and the heat energy are wasted energy and so their arrows are pointing downwards. And we can see that again we've used the scale to work out the width of these. So I've got 400 joules of sound energy which is 4 squares wide and 500 joules of heat energy so that one's 5 squares wide. Here we can see what we can use Sankey diagrams for. I can use them to compare these two light bulbs. So I've got an old-fashioned filament lamp here, and I've got an energy-saving bulb here. And here's the Sankey diagram for the filament lamp, and I've got 100 joules of electrical energy going in, and from that I get 10 joules of useful light energy out, and 90 joules of heat energy wasted. Whereas for the energy saving bowl, for the 100 joules of electrical energy that goes in, I get 75 joules of useful light out and 25 joules of wasted heat energy. So the diagrams show us that the energy saving bowl wastes much less heat energy than the old traditional filament lamp.